What's up, everybody? Back with another Bible study. Today, we're going to be going through 1 Samuel chapter 18. Hallelujah. If you haven't seen the last chapter, check it out. That was David and Goliath, 1 Samuel 17. And before we get started, let me preach the gospel. Everyone is going to stand before God for judgment one day. Anyone who hasn't received forgiveness of sins and been made right with God is going to be judged and thrown into the lake of fire for the second death, the body and soul. God requires perfection in order to inherit eternal life, in order to be with him in his kingdom. None of us are perfect. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God. There's nothing we can do to earn a right standing with God, and that's why Jesus came. Jesus came 2,000 years ago, born as a human, faced temptation just like us, but lived a perfect life. And although he was perfect and didn't deserve any punishment, the death that he died was for us. The death that we deserve in a lake of fire for our sins, he died for us on a cross. So that through him, that death is taken away from us and we receive eternal life. Through him, our sin is taken away and we receive his righteousness, his perfection that he lived out. Repent. And believe the gospel. If you believe Jesus died on the cross for your sins and rose three days later and through his sacrifice is offering you eternal life, if you believe that and you truly turn to him for the forgiveness of your sins and ask him to forgive you, he will forgive you, he will give you the Holy Spirit, and he will give you eternal life. The Bible says we can't even imagine what God has prepared for those who love him. Repent and believe the gospel. We'll give your life to Jesus today. And uh, pray for Gene. He's a dis distant family member of mine who just had surgery, he has heart failure, uh, hopefully the surgery has helped him out, uh, but he still has problem, problems with his heart. Pray for my father for his recovery from surgery. Pray for uh, Sarah, who's been sick. Uh, and if it's in your heart, pray for me. I've had uh, some issues the last few weeks Started with an infection in my toe that spread on my foot and my leg. Then a rash came came over my whole body. Um, it's still in my legs. Uh, so say a prayer for me as well. But most of all, let's be right with God. Let's be ready. Jesus is coming soon. The judgment is coming soon. We got to be right with him and ready. So First Samuel 18. And also pray for... Uh, you know, pray for peace in Ukraine and Russia. We know this stuff is going to happen. We know these uh, things are going to happen. We know that once the tribulation starts, billions of people are going to die. And that's why we have to reach people. We have to preach the gospel. We have to warn the people. But let's get into 1 Samuel 18. Now it came about when he finished, when he had finished speaking to Saul, speaking about David, right after he killed uh, Goliath. He killed Goliath, cut his head off, and took it into Jerusalem to Saul. Now it came about when he had finished speaking to Saul, that the soul of Jonathan, Saul's son, was knit to the soul of David, and Jonathan loved him as himself. Saul took him that day and did not let him return to his father's house. Then Jonathan made a covenant with David because he loved him as himself. Jonathan stripped himself of the robe that was on him and gave it to David with his armor, including his sword and his bow and his belt. So David went out wherever Saul sent him and prospered. And Saul set him over the men of war. And it was pleasing in the sight of all the people and also in the sight of Saul's servants. It happened as they were, as they were coming that David returned, returned from killing the Philistine, Goliath, that the women came out from all the cities of Israel singing and dancing to meet King Saul with tambourines, with joy, and with musical instruments. The women sang as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands, and David his ten thousands. Then Saul became very angry for the saying, or for the saying displeased him. And he said, They have ascribed to David ten thousands, but to me they have ascribed thousands. Now what more can he have but the kingdom? Saul looked at, at David with suspicion from that day on. Now it came about on the next day that an evil spirit from God came mightily upon Saul, and he raved in the midst of his house, while David was playing the harp with his hand, as usual. And a spear was in Saul's hand. Saul hurled the spear, for he thought, I will pin David to the wall. But David escaped from his presence twice. So Saul was trying to kill David, because he was, he was given the credit. They said, uh, David has slain, slain ten thousands. 
but Saul only thousands. And Saul was a king. So he was his enemy. Even though David was just, you know, he was doing what he was supposed to do. He was trying to help Saul out, but Saul tried to kill him. Now Saul was afraid of David, for Yahuwah had, was with him, but he had departed from Saul. Therefore Saul removed, removed him from his presence and, and anointed him, or appointed him as his commander of a thousand. And he went out and came in before the people. David was prospering in all the ways of Yahuwah. Or prospering in all the ways for Yahuwah in all his ways because Yahuwah was with him. The Lord was with him. When Saul saw that he was prospering greatly, he dreaded him. But all Israel and Judah, and it's interesting also that it separates Israel and Judah here because uh, it wasn't until the days after Solomon that uh, Israel was truly separated from Judah. But all Israel and Judah loved David, and he went out and came in before them. Then Saul said to David, here is my older da daughter, Merab. I will give her to you as a wife. Only be a valiant man for me and fight Yahuwah's battles. For Saul thought, my hand shall not be against him, but let the hand of the Philistines be against him. He was still trying to have him killed. But David said to Saul, who am I? And what is my life for my father's family in Israel that I should be the king's son-in-law? David was humble. And those who are humble will be exalted. Those who are arrogant will be brought low. So it came about at the time where Merab, Saul's daughter, should have been given to David that, he, that she was given to Adriel the Maholothite for a wife. Now Michael, Saul's daughter, loved David. When they told Saul the thing was agreeable to him, Saul thought, I will give her, I will give her to him that she may become a snare to him. And that the hand of the Philistines may, may be against him. Therefore Saul said to David, For a second time you may be my son-in-law today. And Saul commanded his servants, Speak to David secretly, saying, Behold, the king delights in you, and all his servants love you. Now therefore become the king's son-in-law. So Saul's servants spoke these words to David. But David said, Is it, triv is it trivial in your sight? To become the king's son-in-law? Since I am a poor man and lightly esteemed, David was poor. The servants of Saul reported to him according to these words which David spoke. Saul then said, Thus you shall say to David, The king does not desire any dowry, any uh, bride price, except a hundred foreskins of the Philistines, to take vengeance on the king's enemies. Now Saul planned to make David fall by the hand of the Philistines. When his servants told David these words, it pleased David to become the king's son-in-law. Before the days had, had, had expired, David rose up and went, he and his men, and struck down 200 men of the Philistines. Then David brought their foreskins, and they gave them in full number to the king, that he might become the king's son-in-law. So Saul gave him Michael, his daughter, for a wife. When Saul, knew, Saul, when Saul saw and knew that Yahuwah was with David and that Michael, Saul's daughter, loved him, then Saul was even more afraid of David. Thus Saul was David's enemy continually. Then the commanders of the Philistines went out to battle, and it happened as often as they went out that David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul. So his name was highly esteemed. And that's the end of 1 Samuel 18. We'll stop it right there for right now. Uh, we'll get into chapter 19, either if not, to, if not tonight, tomorrow. And we'll continue through the story of David. But, uh, you know, David was humble. David was poor. And uh, God exalted him. And Saul wanted to kill him. And little did, know, little did Saul know at this time that this is who Samuel was speaking about, the king who was going to replace him. And we know that 
you know, after Saul, David came into power. And he was one of the greatest, probably the greatest king of Israel. And uh, praise God. That's the end of 1 Samuel 18. Thank y'all for tuning in. Pray for Gene. Pray for Sarah. Pray for my father. Pray for myself if, you, if it's in your heart. Let's stay focused on God. Let's be, right. Let's be ready. Let's be right with him. Let's serve him with all our heart. There's not much time left. We're living in the last days. Pray for the people in Ukraine and Russia. There's already, I want to say, almost a thousand people that have died in this war. Uh, at least 800, 900 total. And, uh, you know, the judgment of God is coming upon this world, and we need to be ready. We need to be ready. We need to be right with God. We need to trust in God. He is the one who's going to protect us. But this is meant to happen. We're in the last days. Billions of people are going to die when it all happens. Billions. And most of them are going to be lost. We need to trust in God and strive to be in his kingdom. Many, Jesus said, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did not prophesy in your name? Did not cast out demons? Did not do this and that? He said, I will say to them, I never knew you. You who work lawlessness, which is sin. The law of God is what defines sin. Breaking his commandments, that's breaking his law, the Old Testament law. So we need to follow him. We need to keep his commandments. Let's be ready and right with him. Let's serve him with all our heart. And if you don't have a relationship with Jesus, turn to him. Give your life to Jesus today. Repent and believe the gospel. Jesus loves you. He wants to save you. He wants to give you eternal life. You just got to be willing to truly turn to him and ask him for forgiveness. For, for forgiveness. Repent and believe the gospel. Give your life to Jesus today. That's the end of 1 Samuel 18. Thank y'all for tuning in. Love y'all. Shalom.